Tulsa Black Folk, uh, W.B. Du Bois' uh, seminal book, and it is at the end of his chapter criticizing Booker T. Washington. And this is the last few words of that uh, chapter. Du Bois says, by every civilized and peaceful method, we must strive for the rights which the world accords to men, clinging unwaveringly to those great words which the sons of the fathers would fain forget. Quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So even as there was a debate among those two great men. There was an agreement that the way forward was through an embrace of those founding principles. Uh, that's not exactly where I want to kick us off. My question for you, Tara, is are you a feminist? Um, I think it depends on, number one, I, I want to pause on that quote because that's actually the quote that I have on my Facebook page. Um, but um, So we'll transition into the feminist part, uh, pick up on that. But I think it, it, it really, number one, depends on what your definition of feminism is. I think that um, the left has really just essentially hijacked that word, hijacked feminism. Uh, I would consider myself a feminist in the, you know, in the vein of um, equality for all including women, but I think that you know, the Democratic Party and liberals do not have ownership over the word feminism or a feminist, and I think that it's been mischaracterized over the years um, um, to, to one side of the aisle as opposed to embracing what it truly means, and that means equality uh, and inclusion for all, if you will. And that's why this quote is on your Facebook page? Yeah, it's one of the reasons, you know, I think, you know, the biggest reason probably goes back to the fact that, you know, we were endowed with unalienable rights that no man can give us. No one can give you those rights. These are God-given rights that we've been given. And so um, we, you know, we were given these rights so we could go forward and pursue life, liberty, happiness, justice. Uh, and those are, I mean, I think those are so important. So, the, you know, the government didn't give this to me. Man didn't give this to me. God gave this to me. And it is my right as a citizen, as an American, as a woman, as all those things, you know, I'm all of those things but not any one thing. Um, it's, it's my right to be able to pursue that with as limited, and this is, I think this is why and where you see a lot of um, this, this move for independence um, come about, but this is why. Uh, people are embracing these principles to say that it's not government's right to give or take away my rights. And that's one of the biggest reasons why it's on my page. It, it goes far beyond this notion of feminism. It is a right just as a, as a, as a person who's been given these rights by, by someone that no man can take away. This, I'm not sure if this is fair to ask you this now. I did prep her a little bit beforehand. <laughs> I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. Uh, I've been asking people and I, I, uh, what their definition of black conservatism is. Mm -hmm. Do you think, does it, ha does it differ from conservatism in general? No, I don't, you know, I don't know what that is, honestly. I, I think it's a great title, don't get me wrong. It's a great title for a class or for a discussion. But I don't know what that is. Um, I'm a conservative who happens to be black. How is that different? You're a conservative because who happens to be white. You're a conservative who happens to be a female. You're a conservative who, I mean, I grew up on conservative principles. I didn't know I was a Republican until I was older. I just know that I grew up with a set of values that my parents instilled in me um, that today that we call those conservative principles conservative values. I'm not ashamed of them. I don't apologize for them. Um, and I happen to be black. I happen to be a woman who has these beliefs, who has these values. So I, I'm not sure what that term means, but I think that you know, if we want to categorize people, then yeah, you can say I'm a black conservative. But what does that mean in the scope of conservatism? It just means that I share beliefs that most, most Americans do. Most of Americans are moderate to conservative. I'm curious about how those values that you talk about, uh, what are they and how do they 
begin to jive with your idea of feminism? Well, I think, you know, I, I, I really, I am so proud of, if I, if, if, okay, I'm going to use a category now, even though I said I wasn't going to. Um, I didn't want to put people in a box, but I'm proud of the women conservatives um, as of late that are speaking out in this country. Um, I think it's, it's well overdue. But I think just like any other movement or any other cycle in America where you see people go through movements, whether it's the civil rights movement, whether it's reconstruction, um, this is another movement, whether it's you know, this move for independence, um, this move for feminism. Um, what makes a feminist? A feminist is a woman who's not afraid to speak up. And, and that's what's happening. I think that's what you're seeing. And I think that, you know, for me, I've just always had, um, I, I've just always had an outspokenness about me from the time I was young. I always knew that I wanted to, to impact my community, society, America. I had a stake in, in this country. I was raised on those beliefs. I fell in love with civics in the fifth grade. I mean, it's just, it's, it sounds as American as apple pie, but that's just really as simple as it is. Um, and there are a lot of Americans like that. People, you know, I, I remember having this conversation during the campaign um, on CNN, and it, You're it was talking about the most recent presidential. This campaign? most recent uh, presidential campaign, and someone just was outraged that I had the, the audacity, if you will, um, <laughs> to say that I could relate when 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 Sarah Palin said, you know, soccer moms that I I I could relate to that that I could, you know, and I said, well, my mom was a soccer mom. I mean, people were shocked. What do you mean? Your mother wasn't a, you can't be that black like and Roland be like, Martin. yeah, it, it, well, I won't put any Roland names, Roland. it was, but I mean, <laughs> and I'm going, are you kidding? I said, I played soccer as a kid. Why am I not a soccer kid? Why is my mom not a soccer mom? My niece and nephew play soccer. Like, is, I mean, can only white people be soccer moms? And soccer dads, and my brother's a soccer dad. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, we put each other in these boxes of these stereotypical labels. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing, but that was that's my experience. We all have different experiences we bring to the table. We all have different upbringings. But you can't assume because I'm black that I have a you know that that I can't relate to someone like Sarah Palin, who I relate to quite a bit. I like to. I've been hunting. I like to shoot. I mean, I, these are just. But th th that's not abnormal to me. You know. This is the environment I grew up in the Midwest. This is the environment I grew up in. It is it is a societal environmental thing, and there are more and more. And frankly, there are more and more black people like me. I got and, and this is I, I didn't think I was going to go here, but I have to say this. I don't think I don't know if I've ever told you the story, Joseph. But let's go back to the Cosby days for a minute. <laughs> not to all the way not back. to well <laughs> well it's a long way to go back. Yeah, but you know I just remember watching the Cosby Show. And, 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 and we are probably, we're close in age anyway, um, just, but I, I remember watching the I'm Cosby show and saying, <laughs> and saying, it's about time that TV showed black people that I know, that I see every day. And I'm not saying, that's not to take away, there are, but the, there are people in all walks of life in all different colors. There are poor black people, poor white people, poor Hispanics, rich Hispanics, rich white people, rich black people. But for once in my life, and I liked, I mean, I, I remember watching Good Times too, and I love Good Times. But I, you know, the family I related to most was the Cosbys. That dad was like my dad. Claire Huxville was like my mom, although my mom was probably a little stricter. But, you know, I mean, I just, this notion that, you know, we all think alike, act alike, sound the same. So I think that, you know, I, I think it's important to speak out when you see, when you see that. There is another way. There are other options. There are, and for me, that, that was what compelled me, you know, when I got into politics, to move towards a party, if you will, because I felt like, you know, I have these beliefs. I have these things I want to speak out about. Surely there are others like me. And surely, if not, we can, you know, I can educate others the same way that I was educated um, of what conservatism and what beliefs are, what feminists means, what feminism means to me as a person, as, a, as you know, these, these words, by the way, were never really used in my household. We didn't have labels in my household. We didn't have, I, I, frankly, I lived in a race neutral household. We didn't talk about, you know, the white man has got me down or, you know, 
blacks are better because, or there was, there was no racial superiority issues in my household, or um, he's different because of this, or he's different with that. It was like, you work hard, you, you, you keep your nose clean, you know, these are just core basic principles. There wasn't talk about, you know, what a feminist was, what a liberal, or liberal Democrat, or any of those things, although I am a second generation Republican. Well, let me ask you uh, this question. First, um, if I could ask Lawrence to come out, because there's an echo. In my, yeah, my mic. I tried to lower mic, it a little bit. Which is very annoying. <laughs> I think we'll drive everyone out of the room eventually. Oh, it's not me that's annoying? Okay, no. thank you. Thank God. Well, I have this, what you talked about, uh, I have several questions, um, but uh, the first question, well, let me ask this question first. Why is it that, uh, you mentioned Sarah Palin, uh, some other women, uh, conservative women who are in the news quite a bit now, Michelle Bachman. Yep. Uh, well, Maureen Dowd's column this week called them mean. Uh, why is it that we have feminists who, uh, for instance, were not big fans of Condoleezza Rice, mm -hmm. uh, uh, do not seem to be, at least in California, don't seem to be backing uh, Meg Whitman? Yeah, and how is it a man can get away with calling her what he, what he did and still even be running at this point? I mean, I, I think that there's such a yeah. huge so double he's standard. He's not quite sure who used the uh, term in, yeah. in his office. Uh, what, how would you, how would well, I think you explain there's, I think, that yeah. uh, I, I think there's, lack well, of feminist support for, for women? Well, who, because there's a huge, it's, 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 it's the same, you know, I think it's the same in the black community. There's a huge double standard. It's, it's, it's hypocrisy, frankly. It's a huge huge double standard. I think had that man been a Republican and said that about a Democrat woman, I mean, that he wouldn't even be running right now. He'd be under the bus, off the, off the ballot, I mean, out of there. And, uh, and that's not, I mean, and I don't, I don't I'm not, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think we should make light of those things. I think that any woman who's, who is putting herself out there and, and, and the way that these women are deserve the support. If you're going to say that you are for feminist rights, if you're going to say that you support women who are running for office, it, then be bipartisan about it and support women in office, unless you are clearly a partisan organization, which many of these organizations purport, have purported for years to be um, nonpartisan or bipartisan. And then their true colors kind of show when, when you see very strong, capable candidates, whether they're conservatives, whether they're liberals, come out of the box. I think that these rep women represent the fabric of America just like anybody else. I think that, again, um, as cycles happen, you begin to see more and more of that because it, it's becoming uh, more accepted. It's still not at the level that it should be, I think, mm -hmm. um, on the conservative side. I think, you know, hopefully, like anything else, that will, um, that will equal out, although I don't, I don't know, I'm a little skeptical, but I think over time, it's become more accepted. I think we have to stop demonizing these women, though. These are um, you know, they have a right to run just like everyone else. This is America. They have very legitimate values and beliefs and platforms um, uh, that, um, that are worth championing. I mean, you know, in Whitman's case, for example, Fiorina's case, these are, I mean, these are women who, who ran powerful companies, smart, intelligent, um, and, and have the credibility in, in many ways as any other man, if you will. So 